there's more going on here than you realize. It's code. I see you, John FNAF. I see you with this mystery code. Is he starting his own ARG? John FNAF starting an ARG? And welcome to GT Not Live, where today it is shockingly cold up in the Fnatic. <laughs> very. Uh, right? It is chilly, man. I don't know what it is. That, that's why I'm wearing this uh, very large coat that looks like I skinned a Muppet. <laughs> I was going to say, it gives like soft Wunzler. <laughs> <laughs> How bad could I possibly be? Let's Ad? see. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, actually, now that you say soft onceler <laughs> you are so right this is absolutely the onceler coat how bad eh, 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 could i be um truth <laughs> tumblr verse eat your heart out um here's <laughs> now is that bad? You know, now that you're retired I, right yeah, yeah it's that's, whatever at this right, point whatever at this point it's um is, it, is this is this what would be called a tumblr sexy man uh, the Onceler? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I see. I For know. Certain. You, I got that tutorial. Right. Way so, back when. Way back when. In, in the olden days. <laughs> yeah. The before times. The before times. I, yeah, I've ascended now. You, <laughs> in my knowledge. Thank, thank God. I'm yeah. glad that I don't have to go through another teaching session. I will say, though. Yeah. Um, I, I got nervous during the Tumblr um, Sexy Man lecture. I can't imagine why. But <laughs> I... It will never be as bad as when my first or second week I had to teach you about kinning. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And I wimped out so bad that I wasn't even honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, I gave you, like, a... If you squint and, like, turn your head, maybe. Yeah. But... And now you've learned that you don't have to pull any punches. I mean, yeah. I But that's, like, after two years. I know. When but I, still, but hey, know. It's, it's, a, it's a long and winding road. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That leads to this couch. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it, though. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank, I'm glad of that course. we've progressed to a level where we're just able to, to relate. Right. Yeah. So and that true. You, you realize that, <laughs> you know, this is an open forum. Yeah, it sure is. And, and all knowledge is good knowledge. Yeah. Sometimes it's forbidden knowledge, and you're like, oh, boy, what have I done? But once you open that Pandora's box. <laughs> There's no shutting yeah. it. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, speaking of this uh, weird monster coat, a uh, fun fact, uh, <laughs> this was an early and, and not great prototype of what was supposed to be the, um, the, the finale walk of Northern Lights. So originally, fun fact, uh, Northern Lights, <laughs> this is the continuation of the fun fact, which is why I said fun fact again. So there, it's, it's all one collective fun fact. <laughs> It's all one collective fun fact. Get, stick with me on this one. But uh, the idea for doing the fashion show and doing a, a series of runways for style theory was something that I had early last year. And we originally wanted to do it at the end of the year to premiere the Northern Lights collection that we did, which was the one with the snowsuit and the big heavy sweaters and all of that stuff, right? And timing-wise, it just didn't work out right like we want a little bit more time to plan it we need a little bit more time but we did go down the pathway for a little bit of pursuing things that were like hey what do we want to actually walk the runway as a part of this show and we had created like illustrations of this like ridiculous uh kind of green fur coat not real fur but it was kind of like leafy feathery coat like a green like feathery like lime green feathery coat and <laughs> and so in the development process uh, Chimera, the, the team who works with us for all of our merch stuff um, and all the apparel things that we do, they, they created the, <laughs> this was like <laughs> draft one, which is so fundamentally not <laughs> what it was. It went from like this cool, big, like very soft, very fluffy, like furry, feathery coat. It was awesome. It was so cool. I, I should dig it through my email and see if I can find the images of it. And it remind me and I can see if I can get yeah, it for you. Yeah, for sure. So that way people can envision what it was supposed to be. Yeah. And then, I don't know if it was just it got lost in translation or practicality sense or whatever, but it became this. <laughs> I like, love Soft Onceler. I mean, Soft Onceler <laughs> is great, but it is also not 
the final walk of a like fashion runway show. No, certainly, certainly not. Certainly not. This is the one slur when it's raining really bad outside yeah. and he just needs a hot cup of tea at the end of the day. <laughs> this is the one slur's like bathrobe at the end of the day. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm getting out of the bath. I'm a little bit wet. It's kind of cold <laughs> in my room. And I want, and I need something to keep me warm. Oh my God, the fan art. I can see it in my head. <laughs> They've probably done it already. Oh, I, I was going to say, it probably exists There's, at this point. There has, hold on. So anyway, I've, I've held on to this coat just because I, I kind of love it. Uh, I don't know where, I, I started wearing it like a week ago just because I've, I've been cold the last couple of days. And so I'm like, oh, let me wear this. And today was one of those days where it was cold. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll show everyone the failed Onceler coat that we had going on. Are you digging through? You're looking for Onceler. What do you... <laughs> Once they're in a row, oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> Ash is over there looking up, uh, no joke, Google image searching, once they're in a robe. <laughs> I'm hope, so have, certain it's out there. You have safe search on, clearly. I based, do. Based on the results that I'm seeing over there, that yeah. is safe search on. It says blur explicit images. I, I Just beware if you turn safe search off. Oh, it's staying on. I, I do not recommend. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's the story of this one. Um, now we have more time. We're still now. The final walk of the runway show is actually going to be a big. Uh, it's it's going to be a, a big finale piece, big in a different way. It'll be a really fun interactive piece. I think that it's pretty unique. Um, but that's coming up in in April. But just to give you a little peek behind the scenes of, of what it takes to like design clothing, what it takes to like de design a fashion show, and some of the things that the, the, the failures or missteps along the way or the, the fun coincidences that happen. Sometimes it looks like you skin Oscar the Grouch and you make a coat out of him. <laughs> Speaking of shaven legs, uh, <laughs> John FNAF. I don't know. John FNAF, have you ever shaved your legs? <laughs> Feel free to comment down below. We'll pin it. We'll pin it so that way everyone knows the answer. John FNAF, have you ever shaved your legs? And are you gonna shave your legs? Off of my recommendation, I hope the answer is yes. Uh, anyway, uh, we are reacting to the finale of his uh, I Solved FNAF Security Breach. So last time, he was basically trying to come up with the, the answer of whether the mimic has been in anticipated since the very beginning, right? Um, in FNAF Ruin, obviously, there's the grand reveal of like, whoa, it was the mimic the whole time. And I think it got a lot of people to be like, okay, but that has nothing to do with security breach. Like it kind of came out of left field. And I think a lot of us in the community assumed that it was, you know, hey, people didn't like burn trap and they need to come up with a different answer for it. Or wow, security breach was kind of a mess. And so we're gonna pivot hard to a different solution. The books were obviously teasing the mimic really hard. And so his basic thesis is, hey, I believe the mimic was planned since the very beginning and that the tale of security breach was supposed to be the tale of the mimic and that's what he's going to prove uh he's gone through the ar games and talked a lot about the dlz shipping solutions and about how those events that we see kind of hinted at in the game parallel a lot of the same events that we saw happening in the books um but now the question is you know so what like once the once the animatronic got there once the mimic was in the building can we prove that there was more happening? Like, what was the next steps there? And I think that's where we left off last time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna soft once slur my way into this video and <laughs> kick it off a little. We started like as he was talking about the daycare or like right after he was talking about the uh, animatronic daycare, right? Yeah, with the, um, the spray painted ears. Spray painted ears, yeah. And we were talking about how that was confusing and this and that. So, okay, here we go. So I'm gonna remind it just a little bit so we're all working on the same page. Happens after John that, FNAF. Mimic was shipped to the Pizzaplex and we know that the staff knew about it. But what happens after that? Well, drawn to sound and I said, oh, that, that was the one clue that I really liked a lot. I'm like, oh, the fact that the, it is a singular animatronic that's drawn to sound, that's a weird detail for it to call out, especially in these post-it notes that are sprinkled around the Pizzaplex. And so it's, you know, what is it talking about? Well, the it presumably must be the Mimic, uh, which, I, I liked the call out of it. The drawn to sound thing felt a little bit more generic because I'm like, anything technically is drawn to sound, but here we go. Well, let me point you towards the endo daycare in security breach. Yes. This area has been overlooked for so long because we didn't really know what to make of it until Help Wanted 2 came out. In the endo daycare minigame in Help Wanted 2, it's our job to teach an endo how to behave. We learned that the endos are essentially toddlers that need to be taught what's right and wrong. This is why this area resembles a daycare. Here, young animatronic endoskeletons learn how to associate with guests. 
motivation chips encourage our youth to one day develop a personality and become the next Freddy, Chica, or TBD Pizza Flex star. There's even... I also, and just to call this out, like, I, I think at this point all of us really understand that. Ruin made that very clear that these animatronics are the products of AI and training up AI. The fact that we were supposed to get that out of security breach is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy pants. The idea of, you know, the, the endoskeleton daycare and... Sure, there were some pictures on the walls that were, like, teaching robots good and bad and stuff, but the idea that we went from, like, Afton Glitchtrap virus to, oh, and here's a daycare for robots, which, in and of it's like, even as I say it, it's kind of crazy pants. Yeah. A daycare for robots. Endoskeleton daycare. It's a place where they're being trained up. And, that's crazy. It's a place <laughs> that they're being trained up and basically, you know, growing up from kid to adult, which, uh, not to beat a, a dead horse, because I'm no longer the game theory guy, but I, I, I should have used that as an evidence point for Gregory's a robot, right? Like, <laughs> the fact that there is a, a literal location in the Pizzaplex where robots are treated like toddlers and kids and grow up to learn things and become adults and, and become the next... Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, whatever, TBD mascot character. I mean, that right there already tells you a lot about how robots are being treated and how they're being trained up in this world. And so for me to be like, well, the human robot too. You know, I, I think if, if robots are being treated like humans in the, to the degree that they have a daycare dedicated to them with toys and playthings and soft walls and this and that, it again kind of alludes to this general theme that was happening in that era. Um, like I said, those are my that's my past life. Those are those are the early days. But I I do think it's interesting looking back retroactively and seeing that scene, and being like, how could we have possibly figured that out at that time? But also, huh, the pieces are in place now that we're kind of retroactively looking at. It, it's like, oh, that's interesting that that was there. Even this Easter egg and security breach when you bring Glamrock Freddy into the end of daycare. Yes. I have never been allowed in here before. This must be where I was born. He says this in the exact same room the Help Wanted 2 minigame takes place in. This is where the Endos are given their personalities and taught how to behave. When we teach the correct- The, the one thing that, that's still surprising to me is the fact that, and, and I called this out last time when we I stopped on that quote, which is the fact that they're AIs and they're being trained up via these like system, these training systems, these training algorithms, right? The, the fact that they're being trained up, I'm still surprised that FNAF hasn't done, and it, you know, it's probably a storyline coming down the pipeline, maybe, this idea of multiple versions of the same animatronic. Because mm. cause like the voice says, you can become the next Chica, the next Bonnie, the next Freddy, whatever. And so already we're operating in a world where there are so many endoskeletons you can have a ton of different versions of these characters, right? Like, I'm surprised that we have not seen any of these games, really, showcasing us, here's multiple Glamrock Chicas, because it's a large place, and you would want more than one walking... You have Monty on stage over there, but then you have Monty performing over at Gator Golf or whatever. Um, you could have done that. And I think that would have also helped to clarify a little bit what Security Breach was trying to communicate which was this idea of like the AI network and, and these animatronics growing up and, and being trained. So, so to see more than one Freddy or more than one Chica walking around, it's like, oh, I get, they're copies of each other, they're clones of each other because they're robots that are being fed this data as opposed to, I think what we all walked away with, which was, oh, these animatronics are being corrupted by this virus and we're unsure of whether like it's one for one or are they possessed or whatever. There was a lot of confusion about whether or not the animatronics in, in Security Breach were possessed. Correct behavior, it displays a check mark. This is actually laid out on the doors in this, this area in Security Breach. You see right and wrong behaviors matched with check marks and X's, but you'll notice that Vanny's, hold you up. see right. The, the right behavior here is, is hold the child's hand, not offer the child the balloon, mind you. It's hold the balloon yourself. Like, shouldn't the robot be offering the balloon? You would think. Right? The right behavior here is 
You hold the balloon. Steal the child's balloon, robot. That's that's good. The dad's just like, okay, hey, cool. But it's it's not like here. Would you like a, a balloon, child? It's no. I, I this is my balloon. <laughs> Yay. Also, the fact that the string is kind of like loopy. The the physics of that balloon picture are kind of stressing me out. The more I look at it. Oh yeah. Well, because the string should be taut. It implies mo It implies some level of motion there. The balloon has just been inflated. Or the string is being moved. I'm just saying. It shouldn't be dripping down like that. Right and wrong behaviors matched with check marks and X's. But you'll notice that Vanny's famous purple spray paint is all over the doors. Which begs the question, what was Vanny doing here? Well, to figure this out, we have to look at the door in the room. Question so Vanny, what, that Vanny... So when Vanny crosses out, heal kids. Healing kids is not good. Right? That's what we're implying here. Alternatively don't pose in front of her children. Right, like what? <laughs> hey, hey, don't take selfies next to injured children. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, what's the robot supposed to learn from this? <laughs> What is the what is the moral of this story for the robot? The colors. spray paint is all over the doors, which begs the question: What was Vanny doing here? Well, Vanny to figure doing? this out, we have to look at the what door in the room with this game? where we train the endos. On the door, we see glitch traps yeah. spray painted next to an endo with bunny ears on its head. With Help Wanted Two telling us that this room is where endos are given personalities and taught how to behave, I think this door is indicating that the goal given personalities and taught how to behave. This is one that I probably should... This is a game that I should probably have revisited or we could have Tom revisit at some point. Because huh. um, I remember when we did this, I'm like, it's weird that we're only doing this once. I, fi I figured that this memory game would be a recurring thing or like one with, you know, how, how in Ruin, there were multiple tiers of difficulty for a lot of games. You do like five versions of the like fill the soda game. Like it's crazy. Uh, you, you feed Chica burritos like 300 times. Whereas this one is like a one and done. And we played it once and I survived it. And then immediately it was over. But I'm intrigued by what we're actually training the robots to do here, right? So we have, what is this? F Freddy Mitt? Freddy, what is that? Because because the uh, associated action, the approved action with it is hit with bat. So the, is the approved action here hit Freddy with a bat? Kick a ball? Whoa. Smash a present? What is that? Eat a cake. Be happy about a cake. Here. I'm, I'm pulling this one out. I, I'm curious about this one. Because I feel like this is actually a, a thing. Let's see. Um, this is going to be uh, FNAF Ruin Endoskeleton Jump Scare. Oh, it's not Ruin. It's uh, Help Wanted to Endoskeleton Memory. Great. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Great. Training animatronics. What's up, guys? And welcome. Thank you, Fusion Z Gamer. Okay, see, there's 500 versions of that game. Okay, so this is the one where they're they're training about. So, so it's swim in a pool, use a band aid to to heal you. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know. Okay. Blue. Okay. Yes. Here. Okay. We, blue. Okay. So this one is what is this? Because everyone was so frantic, like I and I, myself included, right? Everyone was so frantic, trying to do all the things with this game. That I think we all kind of like neglected to realize what the game was. Yeah, they disappear at a fourth grade level. Okay, nice. Uh, uh, purple, purple. Okay, red, blue, blue. So is he opening up the present? At a fourth grade level. Okay, nice. What is he? Is okay, he's opening the present. And that's the wrapping page. So present opened. Build a snowman. Put on coat. Gloves? Build a human. Right. What? Is it? Right. It's snowman plus coat. Gloves. I mean gloves. Snowman is a human. That's weird. But then you got pool and kick kick the ball. Okay. No way. No 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 no. What? Blue. It's very in blue blue. It's kind of hard you to press them. At a okay. Level. Okay. So this one is what is this? Draw Freddy. Like there. So okay. There's baby. This is just baby. There are two babies. <laughs> baby plus baby. 
put the baby to sleep, swaddle the baby. I don't understand this. Hit hit with a bat. And it's like a it's like a chalk drawing of Freddy. What is that supposed to be? That's weird. Right? This is one of those where even when I was playing it, something stood out to me as like I, I'm curious what we're actually training the the robots to do. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, gold, gold, red, red. Uh, okay. Hold on. Okay. Pet the dog. Pet the dog. Kick the ball. Eat the cake. Heal the wound. And hold on, hold on. Okay, gold, okay. gold. I was just curious. Red, red. I'm assuming he's yeah, scared here. At. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, I just wanted to call that out because I think that's a very interesting game because we, it is literally, we are being shown what the animatronics are learning. And I feel like that's a, a very deep clue and very insightful into the way they're operating versus what Vanny was teaching him to do or not to do in, in Security Breach. Dave, I think this door is indicating that the goal was to transfer Glitchtrap into the physical world through the Mimic. This door can also be found in Help Wanted 2, which tells me once again that Steel Wool really wanted us to see this. After the Mimic takes a trip through the Endo Daycare, what happens next? Well, this is where the Sticky Note Room comes into play. Oh, the Sticky Note Room! Oh, uh, you know I love me some discussion on Sticky Note Room, which again, last time I called this out, and I don't know if he's going to mention it here, but I think because I'm, I'm bringing it up, I, I think it's, or because we're at this point, I think it's worth calling out again. In the novels, in the, in the Fazbear Frights or Tales from the Pizza Plex books, uh, the mimic is designed to rip the heads and arms off of the animatronic bodies. And so I said, John, show me the pile of headless, armless bodies, and you've won me over in Security Breach. Uh, that being said, you do have in, in the post-it room a bunch of headless, a bunch of heads. You have a bunch of heads, which is pretty telling. So you might not have the, the bodies, but you do have a bunch of heads, which we were all like, that's weird. So yeah, maybe this is the room where the mimic was basically born and trained up. Like, it's daycare, you know? We find out in the Tales books that the Mimic was known for drawing on multicolored sheets of paper, clearly connecting this room to the Mimic. The book even... It does say multicolored sheets of paper, doesn't it? Here, I've got the book right here. I will look it up. Yeah, okay. So it's it's in the Bobby Dots conclusion. He's showing next scene. He's showing Tiger Rock. But actually, this is in... Um, the Bobby Dots conclusion. So he and, and I. So I looked this up. I uh, him mentioning like, oh, it, it drew on multicolored sheets of paper. I'm like, I believe I remember that, but I wanted to get to the actual quote, and I actually have it highlighted here. It's in the Bobby Dots conclusion. Um, the entire interior. This is the storyteller. Uh, the entire interior of the hollow tree trunk, to about six feet up the wall, was plastered with large sheets of construction paper. The paper was in an array of colors, so this is when he says multicolored, but each sheet was marked up with plain black marker. Every sheet of paper was covered with odd stick drawings and strange symbols that were not at all familiar to Mr. Burroughs. Squiggles, squares, loops, triangles within triangles. So that got to the whole uh, mic room, uh, the, the, uh, the sister location room where there's the wall of codes, and that's the, the dash, duck, flash, uh, blast. Crush the Vile Band poem. Uh, that's what that one's, we all kind of assume that it's referring to, right? These the squiggles and triangles within triangles as it writes out this code. But no, John is absolutely right in calling out that there were multicolored sheets of paper all around there that was written on by the Mimic. Yeah, this Mimic program, right? So this is 100% correct. I think that's a really good call out. Drawing on multicolored sheets of paper, yes. clearly connecting this room to the Mimic. The book even says that the Mimic would sometimes color in the entire page. David had always been prone to coloring the entire page. Mimic did that too. And in this room, we see pages completely colored in. Yeah. There's also a workstation that's, that's right fair. above this room you filled a with a bunch of white sticky notes, including the It Is Drawn to Sound and the Mystery Shipment notes. Also hmm. on the table at and this remember, workstation are the blueprints for the Glamrock endoskeletons, where we learn that these are the new generation of endos. All of this stuff clearly connects this that room. One I, that one, I, I'm not sold on this idea of like, the, the Glamrocks are the new version, and the Mimic was like the old version of it. The Mimic, to me, because it is so roughly hacked together with a bunch of random pieces and parts and feels so old and feels so rudimentary in its design, 
I think the whole like, oh, it's the new generation. I, I question that. I see what he's going for, which is th- there are like the glam rocks are the the improved versions of the animatronics, and in the books, there's like the old burned down one and the new one. I, I get what he's going for. I don't think that one's his strongest point, but I think all the other points he's making around this, plus some of the other things that I'm adding with the heads and stuff like that, is really selling me on this idea. That's the one though that I, he he was bringing up this blue point print thing, and I don't see this guy. Uh, I, 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 the point is that this guy inspires the next generations of AI-driven robots, which I think is good. Um, but you would think that there'd be a couple more iterations between, because this guy just feels so rudimentary and like one for one. The mimic. So we know that the mimic drew these pictures, but the biggest mystery is what these pictures mean. When you look at the drawings, learning. most of them have to do with a birthday party. With a note saying birthday time, party time, a drawing of cake, pizza, balloons, kids, presents, and basically everything having to do with a birthday party. I've spent the last two years looking at these sticky notes trying to figure out what this birthday party means. The mimic. I feel, okay, so I don't know what he's going to conclude, but I feel good in because I, I did not look for two years, but I did look for quite a while when we were doing our initial security breach theories. And I feel really good about the fact that it is a robot learning. You know, in our theory, we said, it, oh, it's, it's probably Gregory because of X, Y, and Z. But at its core, what our theory was, was like that room was dedicated to a robot learning and becoming cognizant, right? It's, it starts with a bunch of rudimentary symbols. It starts with zeros and ones. And bit by bit, it puts together more and more complicated words, phrases, images, and eventually is able to concoct whole worlds, right? And so regardless of whether or not you believe Gregory is a robot and that that room was robot Gregory growing up, I do feel really confident in those post-its telling the story of an AI, a, a robot. At the time, we weren't thinking in terms of AI, but a robot powered by AI now that we know learning and growing and becoming more sophisticated in its knowledge. That was at its core our conclusion, so I'm curious what he's going to come up with here. Mimic in the books never attends any sort of birthday party, so why would the Mimic in the games want to draw about birthday parties? Well, I think the answer might have been right in front of us the whole time. I've spent an embarrassing amount of time looking at these three images. Not embarrassing, trust me. (laughs) Spent 10 years on this franchise. Not embarrassing, John. You're good. You're good. The texture files for the sticky notes, trying to figure out what they all mean. But the one thing that I've been missing is the context of the drawings. For a year and a half now, I've been saying that Security Breach is about environmental storytelling. So looking at where the sticky notes are placed in this room is almost as important as what's drawn on them. And in the sticky note room, there's some key drawings that Steel Wool obviously wanted us to see. There's the drawings clearly sitting on top of the cardboard box. Yes, 100%. I I agree. 100%. The fact that there's a box, it's the first thing that you see, it's raised up. Like, in our initial Gregory is a Robot theories, environmental storytelling, we we weren't really thinking along those lines. Like, I I wasn't quite in the mindset of like, oh, because it was, Security Breach was the first time where environmental storytelling became the, the most important way that the story was told in this franchise. Up to that point, it was all through like, character design, details, the lines that are said. So Security Breach really forced us to rethink the way that you theorize about this franchise. But one thing that even I recognized at that point was there's a box here, it's random, there's a bunch of notes everywhere. So in a sea of notes, these are the important ones. And that's why I really leaned in on that the binary that's on that first one. In front of a candle, there's this is my home leave clearly on display as well. Mm -hmm. But even then, these things are not organized whatsoever. They're scattered all over the place, except for one spot. In the back of the room behind this wooden post, you can find six sticky notes that are huh. unlike the rest. That's cool. I, I, huh. That's interesting. That's cool. I did not know that. Outside of the ones that like, yeah, those are the ones that I, I noticed. I didn't see that. Which is again, why in Ruin, and everyone's, we haven't been able to come up with anything about it. But why in Ruin, when in Sun and Moon's room, there's the three by three grid of the th- the when you turn on the mask and there's a three by three grid of notes on the wall with like the three lightning bolts and the sun with the the, the the hillside and whatever it is so conspicuous as this is a clue this is something for you to solve 
But I, I like I don't get it, and we we've, we've talked about it in the theory, and, and you guys haven't really been, like collectively we as a community just haven't been able to figure out what they're trying to say with that. Um, it's very very strange. It might be a tap code or something, but I think we even tried that. Like oh, there's two hearts. You know, there's three lightning bolts. I don't know. Um, but similar to this, right, where there's a very clear moment where it's all laid out. That too has a very clear moment that's all laid out. So I'm, I, I ne didn't notice this. This is a cool call out. In a room full of drawings scattered everywhere, these are perfectly lined yeah, up very in a suspicious. grid and being lit by a candle. Looking closer at them, I noticed that these were the sticky notes with the arrows on them. Yeah, that's weird. And then, let me play the fun little game where I try to figure out what he's gonna say. I don't. They are, but they aren't, right? So I would actually challenge this because some of them are the ones with the arrows, but then you look to the one on the right, that upper right corner, and that one is, I, I think, from the Gen 2. Like, Because if you look at the texture files, they break down into three. There's the like random squiggles, which are very like proto, it's trying to figure out how to write things. There's the ones where it becomes very rudimentary, but it's able to like, you can understand what's what the drawings are and what it's trying to say. And then there's the, the third tier of notes, which have the crayon uh, texture to them, and they are very precise, very well formulated, and, and just very good. These are representing two different generations of notes, which is weird and, and telling. I think that's important. The drawings with the arrows always confused me until yeah. I looked at the rest of the drawings in this grid. We see pictures of kids, fun and games, and then stop, go. With Oh yeah, fun and games, I see it. There's, yeah, fun ga and games, that's right. Yeah, and then stop, go, yeah, okay. With the context of the kids, the arrows, and stop, go, it looks to me like these are directions. As if someone was directing the mimic, on, stop, go, it looks to me like these are direct. Not literal directions, more so showing that the mimic was being guided places. As if someone was directing the mimic throughout the pizza plex, passing a bunch of kids, birthday parties, pizza, fun and games, and balloons. If the mimic really was present throughout the pizza plex, like we see in the duffel bag message earlier about the creepy bot and the it is drawn to sound note, then it would make sense that it would draw about birthday parties. The pizza plex. Yeah, I. I don't know. Plex is a giant place where birthday parties are being held. Yeah, all, all it's the time. seeing in this place is birthday parties. And I think the person guiding the mimic throughout the pizza plex and keeping it in this room was Vanessa. If you look at enough of the sticky notes, you can see evidence of two entities talking to each other. This is something that ID's fantasy threw out there a while ago, and I completely agree. There's notes that say you and me, hello and goodbye, be friend, hide, no hide, get snack, pizza time, and obviously stop go. You even see evidence that they followed through on these notes as well. In the sewer system, you can find a little hideout featuring the drawings, a pizza, and a bunch of cups. That's a... So, I don't disagree that there are multiple people potentially talking through the notes. I... It's... It... If, we're, if we're really using environmental storytelling to say like, oh, people got the snack, in this other completely, you know, far-flung part of the pizza plex. I, no, because I guess you do... Chica... The post-it room isn't far from, like, this the, the Chica battle area. But this, is, this would be a random place to put it, right? That would be like saying, oh, that, like, place that people have hypothesized was, like, Gregory's hideout underneath uh, the pirate ship or whatever where there's a TV and clothes and stuff. It, there is also as much evidence to suggest that someone was living in all different parts of the pizza plex. So finding random pockets of like food and drink and beverage feels like it could just as easily be attributed to whatever, uh, like, um, not nomad or not hermit either, but whoever was kind of like uh, squatting at various points throughout the pizza plex, that could be attributed to them. Ash, what's up? Hi, I have a question. Yes. So the note on the top, is yeah. that a person sitting at a booth with a table in front of them, or is that let? Uh, it, that is a great question. I believe it's, I, I would say it's a let get snack. Because the E's are different, which is what was tripping me up. It is weird, right? Let's get snack. So you think it's a, a person at a table? 
I originally, I read it as let get snack. Yeah. Which changes the meaning for me. It does. It does change it very much so. I, I also think, you know, so is the thought here, and I haven't seen, did I see ID's fantasies? If, if, if I did, it, it would have been a long time ago, so I forget some of the nuances of it. But the, are we assuming then that the person writing in crayon or this chalk texture is that then Vanny? Is that what we're assuming here? That they're two oh. separate people writing? No hide, stop, go. Yeah, where, where'd he pull up the textures real quick? Shoot, where's the textures? There it is. So, okay, what do we got? So this is clearly robot learning how to write. This also feels like it's robot learning how to write after some time. This, it, all the games, blue, yellow, green, red, friends, friends here, all for me. See, all for me, that's, that's the thing that throws me off. Wait, you, me, you, me. So there are two people. I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. The fact that play all day, all for me. Because I could also see a world where like, oh, the crayon textures, the chalk textures, whatever that, that what you say that is, that is Vanny or whoever communicating with the robot. That's fine. But the fact that it says all for me, like Vanny wouldn't say like, all for me. I guess it could like, oh, all the pizza for me, all the presents, I don't know. Mm. That's, that's weird. That's why, that was actually one of the reasons why I went with Gregory slash crying child back in the day with the Gregory is a robot theory and also why I assume that this is the same person across all of them. It shows their learning arc, this, the same robot across all of them. It shows their learning arc, it shows them getting better and it shows all for me is first off it's the classic line that's told to crying child the day before his party before he gets bit. So you know oh the party was all for you and so if you're being trained up on like data from like crying child it's like oh all for me and it would be weird for vanny to say like oh all for me like it feels like oh it was all for the party all for me i'm a robot all for me friends here friends here though that's interesting friends forever goodbye you you and me you me that does imply that there is someone else there but i still i still suspect that the crayons that whoever's writing these notes is still the mimic or who, the, the whatever robot's being trained up. Really laid out that Vanessa was highly involved in the little hideout featuring the drawings, a pizza, and a bunch of cups. I think this was Vanessa and the Mimic communicating with each other. I think it's pretty it's clearly laid it's out that Vanessa thought. was highly involved with Glitchtrap and the Mimic. Whether that be through the trailers. When I first found you, you were nothing. There is more going on here than you realize. Let's go. Whoa. Mystery code. I see. I see you, John FNAF. I see you with this mystery code. I'm going to solve this mystery code. Good. Do it. I'm going to do that. Good. I'm going to see. He has, he has left a mystery code. Is he starting his own ARG? Could be. John FNAF starting an ARG? Could be. Oh, buddy. Get ready. I, oh, I'm not just reacting to your theories. I'm reacting to your ARGs. Let's go. Let's do it here. I will be back for more. Hi, welcome back. I have decoded the message and uh, it is very nice. I, I didn't, I saw this up here and I'm like, is he starting his own ARG? It's for this guy. Matt, thank you for everything you've done for this community. Please finally get some sleep, lol. Don't be afraid to come back for a new FNAF game. I'll miss you, buddy, John. Well, John, you'll just have to have me on your channel for the new FNAF game, right? If, if you'll have me, we can play together. It'll be fun. He, you could come back down here, that's totally fine. Or I could come up to your place, hang out. Party, party with John. That was really nice, thanks bud. It's been an honor to get to theorize with you and I look forward to doing more in the future. It's nice, this has been nice. So many messages hidden around. Do you see the one that uh, Markiplier's editors left me? It wasn't Mark, it was Mark's editors. I did, I did see that one actually. Yeah, I really liked that one. yeah I thought that was really nice too. It's, it's cool. I like, I like that people know that I'm going to watch their stuff and just leave secrets in there. Uh, the one that Mark's editor uh, left in, 
uh, who used to be our editor, fun fact, um, he, he left it in and like, he's like, I know that someone's gonna find this and send it to you on the subreddit. And you know, you got, like if I miss things, you guys catch it, it's awesome. You guys are the best. Anyway, uh, let's, let's wrap this one up, yeah? Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's finish solving security breach finally. After I unmute the video. <laughs> Let's unmute the video and then solve Security Breach, shall we? Yeah! You were nothing. There is more going on here than you realize. Vanessa in Help Wanted. Don't worry. I'll be ready. And I won't let you down. Or the spray paint in the endo daycare from earlier. She was clearly heavily involved with the mimic. And I think that's also shown to us through this drawing in the sticky note room. This drawing of someone holding a flashlight is a lot different than the other drawings of kids wearing birthday hats. It that's is true. because I think this could be a drawing of Vanessa hold holding her flashlight and wearing her security hat. I, I mean, that's a, this, that's a really good point. And that's something that I guess I hadn't really factored in. Cause yeah, it's, it, it shows that the mimic or whoever this robot is that's coming into consciousness in this post-it room, which I feel like is, is definitive proven one way or the other, like whoever this robot is that's coming into consciousness, mimic otherwise, is being exposed to a security guard. And maybe that person is teaching them or maybe that, although it says this is my home get out, which seems to imply that this person is, is coming in regularly or something and it has to be ousted. Because the other interpretation here, and I think one of the reasons I wrote this off is like, oh, it's just this robot looking and seeing this person roaming about the pizza plex, you know, is seeing Vanessa going about, is seeing this, this security guard uh, and just drawing figures of it. But I, I like this explanation of, since it's happening in the early days of it still learning, in the early rudimentary days of it figuring out how to draw things, that Vanessa is there earlier. That's, that's cool. I like that as a detail. This is very compelling. Further solidifying her being present Hold on, sorry, Vanessa, a lot of arrows. holding her flashlight and wearing her security okay. hat. Yes. Further solidifying her being present down there. But even then, the drawing didn't fully convince me. That could be any security. It could be. The thing that really convinced me. It's got stripes me, though, so it's probably the crying child. Me. That could be any security. Two stripes on there? Security guard. Or sorry, absolutely crying child. Security guard is crying child. Confirmed. Does the crying child have two stripes? Oh, it doesn't matter. Stripes. <laughs> As long as that as, shape is there. As long as there are stripes on the shirt. That's child. how you know. Always. Right. Always be crying. Always cry. Always be crying, crying child. <laughs> you do cry. Security guard. The thing that really convinced me yeah. was this. When you're going through the sewer section of the game, you pass by the little hideout and a bunch of drawings, eventually leading you to the sticky note room. But right before you get there, one character comes out of nowhere and starts chasing you all the way to the sticky note room. Vanny. Help. What a janky animation. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> there are just moments where I'm reminded of how janky Security Breach was. There, there's those moments where you're like, oh, that's just goofy, man. That's just goofy. And that's some of the running animations or some of the animations for Vanessa are like, what are you doing? Out of nowhere and starts chasing you all the way to Look the sticky that. note. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you. Ah! Annie. Help wanted to explains to us that when an endo is being trained in the endo daycare, it starts off as a blank robot. Think of the staff bot in front of you as a blank canvas. Right. Then essentially grows up as you teach it more and more. Congratulations. You are now teaching at a fourth grade level. Good job. You are now teaching at a junior high level. Right. This is exactly what we see with the different phases of the drawings. Yes, it's, it's what growing. Once started yes. as a robot talking in binary, slowly started growing up and becoming more intelligent. Yeah. With the drawings and handwriting becoming better and better. Van so I, I guess that's a that's a question for John. We are so at one point he says, "Oh, drawings are happening back and forth between Mimic and Vanessa, presumably." But is or is it actually learning and growing? That's the question. Because also you have some really nicely polished ones over here, like where it gets really, really good, happy ice cream, things like that. Um, so is the crayon texture then? Is that Vanessa or is that the mimic getting better? I, I don't think it really matters. I, I, I feel like I've gotten a little bit of mixed signals on that for his theory here, where I feel like at one point he's like, oh, this is someone writing to the mimic. And on, on the other hand, this is, you know, oh, look, at it, it's gotten better. I don't think it actually matters. I, I, like, I like a lot of what he's saying here. I think this is really compelling. And, and that thing about the night guard and the mimic drawing a night guard and showing the night guard, that's pretty compelling. Um, 
the fact that Vanessa chases you into the room, I think it's a good call out. And it is random, right? Vanessa's appearance, Van Vanny's appearances throughout Security Breach are super random. And so, again, it's one of those where, like, I didn't give it a whole lot of credit or I didn't really think a whole lot about it because it's like Vanny is just awkwardly shoved into a couple moments here. Plus, in my playthrough, I don't think she ever attacked me down. Like, that whole area was pretty uneventful, I feel like. But I also glitched through a huge chunk of Security Breach, so who knows? Um, although, you know, in retrospect, having Vanny come up and try to stop you from go Like, I think if, if, I were, if I were John and I was encouraging him to, like, edit this or like if I was giving him notes in, in a way that I, I sometimes give the creative director notes uh, like Tom or something, I'd be like, hey, that's a really good point, but explain why that matters, right? So Vanessa's coming up presumably because she's trying to, like one, that she knows this part of the pizza plex and is regularly patrolling it, but two, she is trying to stop you from getting to the her secret project, right? She's trying to stop you from getting to this thing that has been her reason for being here, the, the reason why this whole operation exists is to create this thing or, or bring this mimic bot, this robot to life, right? And so that's why she's in such a rush to stop you. Out of all the times that she's trying to stop you in this game, which are few and far between, this is the one that's still scripted into the game, why it's still important and why it's important from a narrative standpoint is because she knows that behind that door is the big secret and who knows, maybe this, the robot itself, right? So she wants to stop you. Um, th connecting that last dot is the thing that takes that from like a, ah, I guess that's an evidence point moment to a, oh, I see why that matters. I see that's important. And actually now I'm, I'm pretty compelled by that, right? As I talk through it, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Why would the devs keep in that Vanessa encounter specifically out of all of the ones that are missing or kind of gone from the game? Well, that's a reason why. It's, it's important from a narrative standpoint at, this, at, at that case. Vanessa was showing the Mimic that this was its family and that this was its home. But as the Mimic started growing up, it started becoming more aware. It started wanting things for itself and getting possessive over what it had, mm -hmm. eventually leading it to kick out anyone who stepped foot in its home. Yeah, I believe that Burn Trap is the result of Glitch Trap plan working entering the physical world through the mimic but, but there's two people sure. who stop that from happening gregory and cassie's dad in ruin we learned that the burn trap ending is not the canon ending to security breach sure. the canon ending is the princess quest ending where gregory destroys glitch trap and frees vanessa we also learned that after gregory freed vanessa they likely caught the mimic and trapped it in the basement like we hear in the candy cadet story there was a monster in the woods but as we learn in Help Wanted 2, Gregory didn't destroy all of Glitch Trap. A piece of him still remained, and sure. Cassie's dad was the one who destroyed that piece in Princess Quest 4. This is why when we finally meet the Mimic in Ruin, there's no trace of Glitch Trap or William Afton left. Gregory and Cassie's dad destroyed it all, leaving the plain old Mimic left to be found by Cassie in the basement. We it's a good story. Does does burn what's burn does burn traps does burn traps model match the mimics model? Right? Cause because if he's saying, hey, this is the mimic is burn trap. Does he match? I don't think he does, right? Because burn trap has two spiky hands. Happening. Gregory. And, and to be fair, like, you know, models change between games, but if, if it is one for one, that would be really compelling. Yeah, see, the, the hands and general, like, Burn Trap is a standardized animatronic, right? He looks like a thing, as opposed to Mimic is kind of a weird mishmash of a lot of different stuff. So. and Cassie's dad. In Ruin, yeah. we learned that the burn trap ending is not the canon ending to Security Breach. The See, I, I think at a certain point you have to say like, hey, burn trap didn't exist. I think, that, and I think that that's what Ruin is trying to make good on here. To me, I think Ruin is like, hey, all, most of these endings were just Gregory's wild imagination, right? They didn't exist. They were just crea creations of his own imagining, right? Like, oh, there's a monster in the basement and it's the burn trap ending. Or, oh, there's two vannies and it's the, like, building on fire ending, whatever. And, the, and, that's, and then in the process, they're confirming Princess Quest was the true ending. 
And so Burn Trap was, um, uh, Burn Trap as we see him is a creation, right? A, a, a creation in the mind of a kid. The real figure is the Mimic, right? Mimic is real. He was never actually Burn Trap. He, he might have been, you know, tried to be programmed in with the, the Afton virus and this and that. Like there might have been all these other things related to him. But to me, it, it might have always been the Mimic and just like, oh, and Burn Trap, like, was a, a fictional thing that you could have continued on. Like, I just don't see a world where Burn Trap was real in the aftermath of Ruin. I guess that's my headcanon or the way that I've been thinking about it, right? And to me, I feel like that's what Ruin was trying to say. It was like, oh, Burn Trap, and uh, don't believe it. Like, that wasn't a thing. And I think partly it's, like, retconning the, the end of that game because people were like, why is William Afton back? And they were mad about that. But I think also part of it is, like, how do we explain... An Afton like bot down in the basement. Oh, it's this mimic thing, you know. That's that's my thought. Canon ending is the. And I don't think it's necessarily like oh we, we want mimic to become, Afton again. I think that's fine too, but saying burn trap and mimic are one and the same is it, it's it might be splitting hairs too much. So th that's just my take. Princess quest ending, where Gregory destroys Glitchtrap and frees Vanessa. We also learn that after Gregory freed Vanessa, they likely caught the mimic and trapped it in the basement, like we hear in the Candy Cadet story. There was a monster in the woods, but the mother caught it and kept it locked in the basement. But the Candy Cadet story. When we were playing through it, we thought it was Vanessa's story, right? I thought we had interpreted it as, I mean, and of course we could always interpret it otherwise, uh, Ruin, Candy Cadet, Ruin. I am a candy Thank you, Rooster Time. Come get your candy here. I have candy all day, every day. Candy, candy, now I will tell you a story. Okay. About a mother and a little boy who lived alone in a cabin in the dark woods. Mother and a little boy lived alone in a cabin in the dark woods, okay. There was a monster in the woods, but the mother caught it and kept it locked in the basement. Oh, sorry. Let me just clarify. This is ruin. <laughs> There's been a lot of Candy Cadet recently. I'm getting, I, I'm getting Help Wanted 2's Candy Cadet confused with Ruin's Candy Cadet. So the more recent one was, was Vanessa. And I'm like, why is he talking about the Vanessa story? Because I thought that that was pretty well established to be probably like Vanessa's story, right? This is Ruin, which is different. Okay, so sorry. Apologies, I had forgotten that. Candy Cadet has just been the narrative device recently. <laughs> like, he's, they've been using him, and I love to see my boy Candy Cadet. So I didn't forget, I just forgot that he existed. Okay. Okay, so assuming that this is the mimic, there's a mother and a boy, and they catch a monster in the basement. So yeah, that seems Gregory, and it's weird that Vanny would be the mother. That's a little weird. Odd. Like a, a, a brother and a sister or something like that, maybe. I mean, some people on the internet do call her mother. I don't know if that's the part of the internet that we should be looking for lore, Ash. <laughs> You know, they're they're thinking a lot of thoughts over the, there. I mean, the internet has a lot of thoughts about a lot of characters. <laughs> you look cautiously. You, you, turn that safe search on, Ash. Oh, it's on. Okay, make sure. It's still on from when I was searching for that uh, Wunzler row you. picture. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> soft Wunzler. Soft. The the soft. Made scary noises at night, but the mother would tell the boy not to worry because it could never get out. Okay. Then she would see the boy love of my to sleep. Okay, so we're still assuming that this is Gregory and, and Vanessa. One day, the monster stopped prowling and instead listened and learned the lullaby. That's interesting. Okay, so it mimics it. So the, the robot, this monster, listens and learns. The next day, when my mother went out to find food, the monster sang the lullaby from the basement. The little boy heard the lullaby and opened the door. door. <laughs> Bear, 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 bear. Bear, bear, bear. <laughs> air horn, bear. air horn. <laughs> Thanks. And he opened the door, and that was so. That's that's the story of the mother. Yeah, I. I mean, the, the, welcome to FNAF, where every story has like three meanings, and you could layer on every single meaning onto every single thing, right? Because Cassie's about to go down to the basement and open the door. Right. Like. See that, and, and that's the trick with that story, right? And I think this is one of the reasons why 
I haven't leaned much into it or I haven't like talked too much about a lot of the Candy Cadet stories because there's they have like three layers of meaning, I feel like. So in this case, you're right to call out like, you know, that could be Vanessa and Gregory and they capture the mimic and shove him into the basement and capture him down there. Sure. But if that's the analogy that you're making, the little boy is presumably Gregory, right? And that story ends with Gregory going down to the basement to open the door. But we just said by being tricked in opening the door. So do we have evidence to suggest that Gregory ever open, opened the door or released the mimic in any way? Because according to John's theory, right? According to John's evidence point here, he's saying that Gregory and Vanessa capture the mimic, lock him in the basement, but then at some point, Gregory then lets him out again. He, by being fooled by the mimic. He hears Vanessa's voice down there and is fooled by the mimic, which I don't know. Gre Gregory was evil the whole time, though. Like, he's... I said, I'm still on camp. Gregory is evil and has always been evil. And like, like, again, the story GGY in the books tells, like, is basically one for one, like, hey, Gregory is a bad kid and he's a bad guy. So... For him to be actively, as the villain, to actively be working against the villain of Ruin. It's just weird. It, it, it's frustrating. Ash. I am. I'm, I'm talking myself in circles. Whereas here with the Candy Cadet story, we literally have Cassie who has listened to the voice of the mimic. Who, who if, say Cassie is the stand-in for the boy in the story. Mm -hmm. You have Cassie listening to the lullaby in the basement, Gregory's voice. And she's about to go down to the basement, open up, and, and literally open the door to the mimic. That is what this ending sequence is leading up to Cassie doing. And so, whereas the beginning of the story applies probably more to Gregory, potentially, the ending of the story applies more to Cassie, and neither one fits him completely. Which, again, is classic FNAF storytelling. Yeah. I mean, for one, I'm glad that even in retirement, FNAF can drive you in circles and over the moon and through the wall and all these different directions. It's like, is it remedied at all? If it's like Bonnie bro is the mom, but not really, because well, that's, that's not a, how it works. Well, and, then, like, and, that, well that's, and that's what I was trying to think through, right? Yeah. So there's a mom and a kid, right? So let's say Bonnie, because we know that Bonnie bro yeah. is, is Cassie's dad. That is confirmed basically at this point. And so Bonnie bro and Cassie Capture a monster in the basement. Mm -hmm. Cassie obviously does not do that. She doesn't know, know any of this. <laughs> no. Bonnie bro, this worker at the establishment. He'd have the knowledge to do it. He'd have the knowledge to do it. He gets himself captured at some point. Right. And then he gets, he gets shoved into a robot and hands the mask to, to Cassie. And Cassie gets fooled. She listens, she listens to the lullaby. Mm. It's tough. Like, there, it's there's no clean parallel. Which is what sucks. Yeah. There's no clean parallel. Hmm. Yeah, it is troubling. Like, I remember going through the Kindy Cadet while we were while we were doing it, and my first thought was like, oh, Gregory. But the more you think about it and connect, like, because now we have the like more of the Cassie storyline. Right. It just gets more and more confusing. Right. Like when do, so Gregory. So they're saying Gregory at some point, and maybe it's prior to the events of Security Breach. Did Gregory at any point? listen to the mimic and let himself get taken over maybe because then it's like if that were to happen and then gregory's voice is used to fool cassie it's like but the mimic was in the basement and like closed away so like did he go back right he like seals him up three times like, yeah like, he's like sealed unsealed sealed <laughs> unsealed sealed unsealed sealed unsealed, unsealed? <laughs> like it's just inefficiency yeah gregory make up your mind man at that, if, if this keeps happening, so it, it just seems These unlikely. mimics keep happening. <laughs> they eh? just keep happening. Why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> it doesn't end. If Gregory has fallen victim to the mimic. Right. And that's the reason why he turns evil and it becomes patient uh, 42 or 43 or whatever patient, 46. Patient 46? 40, <laughs> 46. Uh, some, yeah, 40, 46. 46, right? It's 46. 42 is the meaning of life. 42 is the meaning of life. 46, yeah. So if that's when he becomes patient 46 because of the mimic's influence and that's what turns him evil, why then is he back? Why then is the mimic captured again? 
when does Gregory get re Gregory is never released. I mean, unless there's like more than one mimic. I mean, they're all, I mean, they're. Uh, <laughs> ah, I mean, that on. would be the way to explain I'm that. I'm retired, Ash. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You chose to stay on this couch, and that means you're going to get tormented. I am. I am. I am tormented. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all right. All right. So <laughs> I'm glad we have no answer. So, so basically, yesent. To, yesent? To, yesent to, to John's <laughs> evidence point here. Yes and no, but maybe, but also no, but yay. Why? As we learn in Help Wanted 2, Gregory didn't destroy I all the of Glitch Trap. A piece <laughs> of him man, still remained, and Cassie's nap. dad was the one nap who destroyed pad. that piece in Princess Quest 4. This is why, when we <laughs> finally meet the Mimic in Ruin, there's no trace of Glitch Trap or William Afton left. And you wonder why people are like modern FNAF storytelling. Like, ah! <laughs> Headbang against the wall. Right, it's like, oh, this is fine. Gregory and Cassie's Who dad says that snap isn't clear? All, leaving the plain old mimic left to be found by Cassie in the basement. We learn in Security Breach that Vanessa was sent to the Pizza Plex for a reason. I'm sure. needed somewhere else now. Thank you. And I believe that reason was to help Glitchtrap enter the physical world through the mimic. I, I don't disagree. Like, I don't disagree with that. I think from a, from a narrative standpoint, from a narrative standpoint, I think that makes sense. If you're if you're ignoring all the convoluted clues and Easter eggs and details and toe counting and whatever, I think from a broad stroke standpoint, Afton virus, Afton AI needs a body. Vanessa is being used as a slave to put Afton in a body. That makes logical sense from a narrative flow standpoint. Does it make sense from an evidentiary standpoint? That is the constant frustration with this franchise. But from a, like, I like the narrative of that, yes. Yes, 100%. After shipping the Mimic to the Pizza Plex, Vanessa uses the Endo Daycare to turn the Mimic into this robotic recreation of William Afton. Sure. She keeps the Mimic in the sticky note room, telling it that this was its family. And That's that here, yes. This was its home. But after Gregory frees Vanessa and destroys most of Glitch Trap, they lock the Mimic in the basement. But after Gregory frees Vanessa... Okay and destroys most of glitch trap they locked the mimic in the basement where it okay eventually will trick cassie into setting it free if yeah i mean again from a narrative standpoint that makes sense i don't exactly know how or even if it jives with Gregory, it, it, it doesn't really jive with Gregory literally going around killing people. <laughs> you know, Gregory being patient 46 and going around killing off therapists and stuff. I mean, a lot of the humans in this sequence are troubled. Yeah, like, here's the thing. <laughs> all of this, I think, flows from a narrative story standpoint, and all of this makes sense. I like it. The problem I have is there are just some of these details that, again, FNAF, did, the wrinkles never quite iron out, which is why it's endlessly frustrating to talk about, but also endlessly fascinating. Because it's, it's, if Gregory is patient 46, which seems like all the media has pointed to at this point, you know, the franchise has made it pretty explicitly clear that, like, hey, GGY is Gregory, is Dr. Rabbit, is killing off people, which is patient 46, and specifically therapist is patient 46. Like, it is very explicit. And so how does that jive? I mean, with the Princess Quest in general, like why, why is he bothering to free, you know, why is he bothering to free Vanessa in the first, like that's a, it's a weird canon ending to begin with that the guy is, is evil in some way. But okay, so let's say he's working against the glitch trap virus for some reason, even though he's a killer. And is he frees, him, frees the mimic, yeah, and, and the rest of it checks out. Right now the mimic's trapped in the basement, it's sealed. So yeah, I mean, the rest of it checks out. It's just like, what is Gregory's motivation in a lot of this? Like, what is, what is his goal? Like, who is he really? It goes back to the enigma that is Gregory. Like, Gregory's actions are just so nebulous and weird. It's like, who are you really? Like, what is your actual goal here? Are you just a plot device that's doing whatever the plot's telling you to do? Or, like, do you have a purpose in any of this? Yeah, like, what's your objective, Gregory? Right? Like, what's your true motive? What's his truth? What is Gregory's truth? <laughs> He's living his truth, but everyone's like, what, are, what is your truth, man? That, may, that was probably why he was in therapy. 
but <laughs> the therapist just did not have the skill no, to they, cut they down to the court. court. And clearly, I don't need the, the therapists nor the theorists have any <laughs> ability to, to grapple with Gregory's truth. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and thanks for watching. It was great. I liked it. I thought that was, a, you know, for all my, oops, so for all my hemming and hawing about individual plot points and, and details and this and that, that's a great theory. I thought it was great. I like John a lot and I like his theories a lot and I think that that was very compelling. It got me to, I walked into this being like, no, come on, the mimic was planned, get out of here, that feels like such a retcon. But walking out of it, I'm like, oh, okay. I think, I think they pivoted it, I think they shifted it in some way. I, I would say Burn Trap was probably meant to be the mimic and then people are like, ah, burn trap. And so like they had to skew it a little bit to, to reshape it and reform it in a way that's like, oh, this is the same idea if you squint at it and you know, blur out some of the details and this and that. But yeah, it's the same concept. So yeah, I, I like it. And this, does it solve security breach for me? I don't think it solves all of security. I, th I, think, I think to me, the, the question of security breaches is, is WTF Gregory. Like really, what is it, man? What are you doing? What are you thinking? What is your goal? What is your initiative? Are you evil? Are you not? Are you possessed by the Afton virus? Are you not? What is your goals? What, what is your mission? Because right now you're killing people, but you're, you're cause, cause again, patient 46 is on, is manipulating Vanny. And that is, uh, this is where the rub comes in, right? In the tapes, in the retro CDs, it is made very clear that whoever patient 46 is, is manipulating Vanny through emails and by luring her through the pizza plex and doing all this Machiavellian stuff, right? And the books have made it very clear that that is probably supposed to be Gregory, like almost 100%. And so if Vanessa is doing exactly what John says here, which I think is very believable, bringing an old robot into the pizza plex, dropping it in the basement, training it up via these post-it notes, you know, getting it ready to become an Afton bot or something else. And I think that's another call out here that I'll touch on in a second, but like training it up to be a thing. Great, that all makes sense. Then why then is Gregory suddenly not on that side? Why is it suddenly against the mimic? Like if, if, Gregory is manipulating Vanessa to do all these things and suddenly he's like, no, I need to save you and I need to cure you of the glitch trap virus and also we're gonna lock the mimic in the basement. He, he just randomly frees himself from the Afton virus? Like was Gregory like, like it, it's like you said, it's like flip flop, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. And it's like, no, you gotta choose a side. You can't be flipping and flopping all the time, Gregory. Like you need like one flip flop or two flip flops is fine, but like, we need to see those happening and we need to see the rationale behind why that's happening. And right now I just don't see it. Like I don't get a sense of like why he would suddenly be free of the Afton virus, but now he's not, but now he's working with it. Now he's working against it. That doesn't make sense. So I think that's not a flaw in John's theory. I think John's theory is very good. I think more it's a flaw in this era and specifically security breach about like what was it trying to say? Because I don't think it knew what it was trying to say or I don't think it it had truly delineated like, oh, there's a couple things here, but like this is the thrust of where we're going with this and that's what got it confused. So I think that that's, that's the main problem with it. Um, the other thing I, I was just gonna call out quickly about the post-it notes too is, John says, oh, it's training up to be Afton and a uh, burn trap, right? And I think that makes a lot of sense. I think from a narrative standpoint, it makes sense. And I think from a, we see burn trap. And so like, obviously the mimic and burn trap were on the same. I think from a like broad strokes, if you don't look too closely at it, it's like, oh, that, that makes sense. But if you look at the content of the notes, if you look at like the things that the mimic is being trained for and the things that it's, it's seeing, my friends, all for me, all this stuff, it's very, it's kids. It's all kids. It's not Afton stuff. It's not like, this is your pizzeria. This is your you know, this is your uh, kids, These, this is your home, this is your business. It's not, it's not teaching him Afton stuff, it's teaching him crying child stuff. Which, you know, people don't like when I bring that up, but it's, but it's <laughs> true, right? Like the lines all for me and all this stuff is all, there's so many references back to the FNAF 4 crying child. And there's so many references in those, those post-it notes around it just being a kid, regardless of whether it's crying child or not. If, it, if you're training it up to be Afton, you would be like, 
killer, knife, whatever. Like, why would you, if you're trying to replace Afton and make an adult Afton, why would you fill it with things about like birthday parties and kids and pizza and friendship, you know? So that is the only critique that I have for where the, John's theory, again, from a, from a narrative arc, I think it's great. And I think that makes a lot of sense as just like a, let's just look at where the story should go or where it would make sense for it to go. But looking at the evidence underneath it, and if you take some of those blurry lines and actually focus them in, you're like, wait a minute though, that's not what the, the, the mimic or whatever bot was in there was training, being trained up to be. It was being trained up to be a kid. It was being trained up to be a specific kid. Crank child. But, you know, whatever, right? I, I don't care. But just looking at the notes, the way they're presented, it's all very specific things that relate to one very specific character, which is that it's a kid. But anyway, across the board, though, I think that John has been valiant in his continued efforts to try and make sense of security breach. Because I think that's, it, it's, it's frustrating, right? And, and like I said, I think that game, more than any other part of the franchise, feels the most confused. And I think part of that is just because of whatever handoff existed between Scott and Steel Wool. You know, Scott's gone on record on the subreddit talking about, like, how the game just continued to, like, grow and grow and grow and grow. And he, he checks in on it. He's like, whoa, this thing's gotten really big. It's crazy. And so I feel like at some point down the line, like communication got lost or got confused or, or there, you know, anytime you start working together with a new person or a new company or whatever, there's growing pains with that. I mean, we experienced it with Lunar, right? Where it, suddenly it's like, who's making decisions? How, what's the reporting structure? Who is reporting to who and who's making creative choices? And, you know, what, what are those hierarchies in place? What are those workflow pipelines? How does this change, right? And I think... You know, Steel Wool, uh, they had done Help Wanted, but this was their first, like, mainline FNAF game in a lot of ways. And so I think there was probably some communication there that, you know, wires got crossed or whatever. And as the game continued to get delayed and ballooned, at a certain point, it's too late to kind of make those changes. So I, I think that's what's frustrating about it. Um, and I think that's that's what happened. It's just a product of that time in the franchise's history. Um, but I, you know, I think... I think John has convinced me that, yeah, Mimic was supposed to be there the whole time. So whether or not you solve security breach, John, you have won my headcanon and you have won my heart as always. So thank you for your message. Thank you guys for watching me get frustrated about FNAF yet again. I'm sorry if I rambled and got lost in the sauce a couple times here because I have no doubt that happened. If, yeah, right? Ash is like, yeah, you got lost a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was one. fun. Yeah. So I, 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 you know what? I feel my senility just like. <laughs> Flying away. Senility. Yeah. That's a fantastic word. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So anyway, I, I feel I feel old man map being like, oh, the brain's chugging. Think through the FNAF. <laughs> no. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video. Remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya!